We're now going to finish off the specialist technical principles section by having a look at a variety of finishers, so material finishers. Uh, we'll have a look in this video at a range of timber finishers, and I'll do another video with a range of metal finishers. So the first question is, why do we need to finish material? Uh, there's two answers to this, uh, and this applies to all materials. We finish material, one, to improve the aesthetics, so either to change the color or texture to make something shiny or matte or give it a pattern or a finish. So improving the aesthetics is one key reason. The second key reason is to apply a protective layer to it uh, to stop it from scratching, uh, indentation, potentially to stop from water damage and rot, uh, oxidization and rust on metals. So the two reasons why we have to apply finishes to all materials, one to improve the aesthetics and another to provide a protective finish and layer. Particularly for wood, that protective layer is even more important as we know when water damage gets into timber that will cause warping, cupping and deformation but also rotting. A good quality finish such as a varnish or a wax will offer protection to the surface of that timber. A finish also uh, will enhance the natural grain of a timber. Only if the surface is prepared first that we'll have a look at uh, later. I often get students asking me if they can varnish or wax a piece of MDF or an MDF product. To which I always reply, why would you varnish or wax an MDF product? Because there is no grain on that piece of MDF. The purpose of varnish and wax aesthetically is to bring out the grain and make that look really great. Uh, as you can see on the picture on the bottom left, uh, some wax has been applied uh, to that piece of timber. It's made the grain really sing, really come out. Uh, and like I said before, the preservation of timber is another reason for applying the finish, uh, lengthening the lifespan of a piece of furniture or product, especially if maybe it is some garden furniture that is going to be outside uh, in the rain. Um, you could apply dyes, which change the colour, dyes or stains, which change the colour, maybe giving the illusion that cheap pine is a more expensive mahogany. Uh, finishes can provide gloss or matte finishes, depending on the preference. Uh, in the DT workshop, I am a big fan of using wax to apply finish to a piece of timber to create a matte finish, because it's much easier to create a good quality visual finish. Uh, varnish often creates fingerprints uh, in a dusty environment is very difficult to get right. We'll go through a few of those finishes in a minute, but what's really, really important is that prior to finishing any piece of timber, the surface must be prepared properly. Uh, to prepare that surface, it needs to be clean, it needs to be free of dust, and it needs to be sanded down. Uh, the general way of doing this would be to use an electric sander to roughly sand down the piece of timber first and then using sandpaper or glass paper or finer and finer grits uh, to sand down to create a really smooth finish. Uh, it must be cleaned of any dust or oil, grease, fingerprints uh, before the finish is applied. This is why it's really difficult to do in a classroom environment when other people are working on projects, you're always going to have dust in the air. So try and do your surface preparation, your finishing when you're by yourself in a clean, dust-free room. When the surface is being prepared, there are a few finishes that can be applied. Uh, the most common, I, I suppose, that you would hear of is varnish. Uh, varnish can either be a water-based or an oil-based liquid. Uh, Water-based is more environmentally friendly, obviously it can be poured away, um, whereas oil-based uh, can't be. Um, but oil-based varnish does provide a greater level of protection. Uh, varnish will create a glossy and smooth surface on the piece of timber, creating a skin over the timber to protect from water, scratching and denting. Varnish is also UV resistant and protects that surface of wood uh, from UV radiation, helping stop cracking and shrinking of the wood. 
Another finish would be dyes or stains. Now, dyes or stains will penetrate into the uh, fibres of the timber. Uh, often I see students applying a stain or a dye and then deciding they don't like it and wanting to sand it away. And that's not going to work. It isn't a layer on top of the timber like varnishes. Dyes and stains penetrate deep into the timber. So once it's on, it's on. Um, you can use dyes or stains to provide different colours, different aesthetic colour finishes. Uh, and you can also get dyes and stains in various shades of other timbers. So you could apply an oak dye to a cheap piece of pine or a mahogany dye to a cheap piece of pine to make it appear like that more expensive timber. Wax is my personal favourite. Um, wax can be applied uh, using a wax on wax off technique um, and that will create a smooth uh, matte finish on a piece of timber. It's much easier to apply in a classroom setting um, it's much harder to get wrong. Uh, the best quality furniture wax contains beeswax, uh, which has been softened by the addition of turpentine, and that makes it easy to apply and spread on a surface. Uh, so you must apply the wax, rub it in, and then use a clean cloth to rub away the excess to give your smooth finish. You can also use Danish oil. Danish oil is used primarily in outdoor furniture, on your garden benches and tables, etc. Uh, very easy to apply because it's a liquid, can be applied through a brush or a cloth. Um, a great selection of oils, including maybe teak oil, like I said, for garden furniture. Uh, oils tend to slightly darken the wood, especially light wood like a pine. It gives a really rich, dark finish. The last finish that we should look at is veneer, not necessarily an applied finish like varnish or wax. Veneer can still be classed as a finish. So veneer is a very thin layer of solid timber, like an oak veneer or a mahogany veneer, a very thin layer of timber that comes in rolls that can be applied with adhesive on top of a manufactured board. So potentially a block board or an MDF uh, piece of furniture. That thin layer of veneer does a few things. It makes a cheap piece of timber appear like it is made out of a more expensive piece of timber. So a manufactured board piece of furniture, a table from Ikea, for example, with an oak veneer gives the appearance of an oak table, making it look like a more expensive quality bit of furniture. It also provides dimensional stability. The grain of the veneer it gives that piece of furniture extra strength along the grain. And it also uh, creates stability uh, in terms of stopping breakages or water damage, etc.